I published this circuit on 9 September 2021 for this controlled oscillator. I also made a demo for YouTube. Here again the same circuit but now um, uh, drawn in say a more practical way. And I have drawn it again today and it's here. Uh, and now I did more experiments. Perhaps it's interesting. Of course you can go to uh, the World Wide Web or to certain books and you can always find a lot of information about the 555 chip. It's a timer chip. And here in this beautiful uh, book of LM are the functions. And of course you can study that. Uh, what means all these uh, pins, what means trigger, what means discharge, threshold, and you can even study the complete electronic circuit inside. Um, that of course makes sense, but there's also another way and that is doing experiments and say uh, consider this as a kind of black box. And that's what I did. Here are of course a lot of other information etc. But the black box ID is also very interesting and when you have a circuit that works and in this case that is that 555 chip there are many good uh, ideas to do experiments and the first good idea is um, when you have an amplifier for instance or, or in this case a timer chip make a uh, a piece of wire with a crocodile clip and connect there a capacitor in between and in this case I did this experiment with 470 nanofarad. Or take a crocodile clip and solder inside a resistor between 1k and 470k and I have used here 1k so 1000 ohms. And then make connections. When you have an amplifier and you connect the resistor from the output to the input, there will be certain effects. Uh, it depends of course on the amplifier, I cannot uh, tell much more about it now. And when you do the same with a capacitor, you have the same issue. The amplifier can start to oscillate, it can start to act in a different way because you send a part of the in, for instance audio signal from the output to the input and when the phase is uh, not correct it will start to oscillate and in another case you will surely see another frequency characteristic. But this is a timer and um, here are all these yellow arrows and that mean that, that I want to show what happens when we connect between the different pins that 470 uh, mic 0 0.47 microfarad capacitor, so 470 nanofarad or that 1k resistor. Only a few experiments and here are say some results. This is the power supply that goes from uh, 0 to 30 volts and that will also surely have an effect on the frequency. And here I show some effects. Um, the capacitor is in this timer is 10 nanofarad, but when you connect for instance a capacitor of 470 nanofarad, like this one, between pin 8 and 7 or pin 8 and 6, 8 and 5, 8 and 3 and other, there are more, much more possibilities, I didn't test them all, uh, 1 and 3, 1 and 4, you see all kinds of different effects on your oscilloscope uh, regarding the frequency regarding the duty cycle, etc, etc. So, for instance, when the, when the capacitor is connected between 8 and 6, frequency will go at, at 0 volts, uh, 335 hertz, at 30 volts, so 30 volts coming out of this power supply, 
supplied via that 10k resistor to the 5R5 chip. It's on 10 Hz approximately. And this is the duty cycle. And again, when you change the value of this uh, potentiometer, that's also in the circuit. That's here. It's also an important parameter. The power supply is an important parameter. The voltage of the power supply, the 47K uh, uh, potentiometer, and the, of course, the voltage supply. Uh, where we send in that, say, static voltage to the chip, the black box. And the capacitor, of course, because this capacitor and this uh, resistor set, say, the basic time of this voltage controlled oscillator. So there are a lot of parameters and when we make it more complicated and connect here uh, so, such a resistor or a capacitor to other pins, the whole circuit will uh, get to somewhat other modes. In terms of frequency or in terms of duty cycle, uh, because these are the principles uh, in fact, we are working with a timer circuit, so a time-dependent circuit. There is a resistor, the resistor charge, the capacitor, that, that's, there's a certain time necessary before that capacitor is completely charged. And then that capacitor is shortcut and the whole procedure starts again. Charging, discharging, etc, etc. And when the capacitor has a high value, it will take more time. Uh, to charge that capacitor, that means that the frequency gets lower and when it is a tiny capacitor, the capacitor is charged in a very quick way. So that means a high frequency. Um, let's look at the circuit and show what happens. I have now connected that uh, 470 nanofarad capacitor and it's now connected between pin 1 and 4. And let's see what happens. It's not in the, in the table that I showed anyway. 1 and 4. And when I change that um, 47K. 47K, I will adapt the time base of the scope. When I change the 47k potentiometer, we are, we see this. Now, to, now it stops, but here, on a certain position of the 47k potentiometer, we are on 74 kilohertz. So that's a lot. Um, now I'm gonna connect here that capacitor between 8 and 4. Let's see what happens. Always interesting. 8 and 4. Uh, 8 and 4. We are on 95 kilohertz. We see a lot of strange peaks here. And when I change again that 47k potentiometer, let's see what happens. So, it's has an effect. When we go back to the original circuit, so now I disconnect that 470 nanofarad capacitor. We are here. Now in fact we see the same part of the experiment. It's only a demo experiment anyway. Uh, now we are going connect to connect it between 8 and 5 of the 555 chip. 8 and 5. And this is a frequency. Change at 47k. Seems that you hear the sa constantly the same effect and see the same effect, but when you do these experiments you will surely see that that's not the case. I will lift up now the voltage to the uh, voltage controlled oscillator with that. So there's a substantial effect here. Uh, 
and that's good of course. Um, take out now the extra capacitor. Go to this frequency. Lift up the voltage to the uh, 5.5. So now it's 30 volts. It's driven with 30 volts. Go back now to 10 volts and now to 0 volts. Uh, well, I put down the camera for a while. Move. And want to show uh, the 1K resistor. The experiment with the 1K resistor. I connect now that 1K resistor. And I will go directly, sorry for all these movements, go to the connection of that 1K resistor between pin 8 and 3 of the uh, 555 chip. Here is that resistor. It's now on 8 and 3. 8 and 3. Well, I turned that 47K potentiometer. Now we are, uh, are in a kind of way surely in the ultrasound range. 39 kilohertz, kilocycles. Strange peaks by the way in this waveform. But and let's see what happens when we go to uh, audible frequency and lift up the uh, driver voltage to the 555. Looks the same. But anyway. So, uh, well, that was more or less all to tell. Uh, of course, serious demonstration will take approximately uh, half an hour. Uh, I cannot do that, of course not. My camera only runs for four, 15 minutes. And now it runs on uh, for 12 minutes. But here are the experimental results. When you do that, and of course there are all these effects are, are not dramatic. But uh, these experiments can lead you to the application or the waveform that you really need and really want for a certain um, circuit. For instance, when you want to drive a high voltage transformer, you can search via these experiments to the ideal waveform to drive a high voltage transformer. It will work very good. And finally, I also found with certain connections that there were bursts. I have to um, say, make a. This, this was interesting. When you connect that uh, uh, 470 nanofarad capacitor between 1 and 3, you see burst, burst on approximately 128 kilocycles. That was all. Thanks for watching. Always interesting to do these experiments. Take your time. Uh, within, say, half an hour or so, you can surely find the ideal waveform for your electronic application by doing these experiments.